Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at installing TrueNAS Scale on top of a Proxmox server. Today's installation tutorial will be a basic tutorial and it'll show you how to add one virtual drive. That's right, we won't be passing through any PCI devices for this tutorial. We're just going to be creating a drive image and passing it through from Proxmox. This will be the basic installation that you'll need to get true NAS scale up and running on your Proxmox server. The first thing we're going to need to do in order to install true NAS scale on our Proxmox server is log into our Proxmox web interface. You can see that I've done that here in front of us. The next step we're going to need to do is to download the copy of the true NAS scale ISO to our Proxmox server. Our default location will be local. And if we browse here to my local, you can see that I have no ISOs in this drive. And I really have little to no storage set up in this drive. All my storage is actually housed here in this storage drive where I have three terabytes. So what I want you to note is that my local is going to be the same as yours and that's going to be the default location but you will see me using storage today because that's where i've added my drive to now here at the true nas website we're going to go ahead and click download and that's going to bring us to the download true nas scale page where we can go through the installation process if we scroll down here we're going to be able to find a section where we can continue with a couple of different logins or an email address. We actually only have to click no thanks, I already have signed up. And that's going to bring us to the download page here. Now we're going to be working with the 23.10.2 stable, not the 24.04. So to download this, the first thing we're gonna do is bring our mouse up over the download stable right click it and hit copy link address. Now we're gonna head back to our Proxmox web interface. We're gonna select our ISOs. We're gonna click download from URL and we're going to paste the URL in we generated. Then we're gonna click query URL, which is gonna automatically fill in our file name. And if you haven't already, we're gonna check the advanced box. This is going to allow us to select the hash algorithm and we're going to select 256 and make sure verify credentials is also checked. Back here at the NAS webpage, we're going to see our SHA-256 checksum and we'll highlight that whole checksum. We'll right click and we'll copy it, then go back to our web interface and we'll paste it in the checksum box. Then we can press download. When the download's finished, it'll tell us task okay. As you can see here in the background, I've already done so, so I won't be clicking download. Once you're back at this screen and you've gotten your task okay, you're ready to start the installation process or at least the process of creating the TrueNAS VM. To create your VM, you're gonna click create VM right up here in the top right hand corner of the screen. And then you're going to give it a name. We'll call ours True NAS Video for the sake of this video. And we're going to hit Next. Now here it's going to ask us our storage media. If you haven't set up any other drives, yours will be called Local. Today mine's called Storage as I explained a minute ago in the video. I won't be using the default because of my space limitations on my default system drive. Then we're going to select our ISO image, which is going to be TrueNAS Scale, and Linux and the 6x version will be fine. Hitting Next for our system, we want to check QEMU Guest Agent, and TrueNAS will have that installed and configured by default. So we won't have to do any installation later on for the QEMU Guest Agent. All the rest of this can stay the same, so we'll press next. And here at disks, we wanna do a little bit of configuration. The first thing we're going to do is change the bus device to SATA. If you are using an SSD for your primary drive, you wanna make sure you click discard 
We, however, are not, so we'll be able to leave that alone. And I'm going to change this to 20 gigs. At the TrueNAS scale page, we should be able to find a minimum system resources. If we look through here, so here at the TrueNAS documentation, we're going to be able to find what scale requires for information or minimum system resources for installation. And you can notice that it requires two cores, eight gigs of memory, and a 16 gig SSD boot device. Now, this doesn't have to be an SSD, but it does need to be 16 gigs. For best performance, you do want to make sure it's an SSD, though. And then you're going to require some other storage devices for actually creating your pool on. So to configure that here in Proxmox, we'll head back over to the Proxmox device and our primary drive that we decided was going to be a SATA drive and it's going to be housed on storage is going to be 20 gigs just to give us a little bit extra headroom over the minimum of 16 gigs that's required. So now we can go ahead and install TrueNAS scale, but we're not going to have anything to store anything on afterwards. And we don't have to set it up at this step, but it does make it much easier if we do. So if we go ahead here and we click add, it's gonna create us a new SATA drive with the ID of one, and it'll give us the default size of 32 gigs. Let's go ahead and give it 100 gigs for the sake of this video. 100 gigs really today is pretty small for this type of appliance, but 100 gigs will be enough that we can get some form of a usable demo here for the sake of this video. So we'll create that drive. Now we add two, we'll hit next, CPU, we require two cores. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this type here to host. And the reason I'm gonna change this to host is I want to be able to support virtualization and other things for features later on down the road that we may demonstrate on TrueNAS Scale. TrueNAS Scale is actually a virtualization client. And since we cover virtualization software, I may want to do demos for that later on. So we're gonna choose host. If you don't want to do any virtualization, the default's fine, but I would suggest that you may you want to use TrueNAS Core instead of TrueNAS Scale in that particular scenario. Hitting next, we need to give it at least eight gigs of RAM. So I'm actually going to bring up my calculator and I'm going to multiply 1024 times 8, and we get 8192. So we can go ahead and enter 8192 here, which is going to give us that 8 gigs of RAM that TrueNAS needs. Now, the reason we're only giving it 8 gigs and we're not trying to give it more because it really wants 16 is the fact that this system only has 16 gigs in it and we're just resource limited. So we'll hit next now and we'll use our default VMBR0 bridge. If you have other bridges set up, you wanna make sure you change them for wherever in your network those bridges might point that you want your storage to be. Hitting next, we can confirm all of our settings and they all look good, so we'll press finish. Now our system's going to go ahead and create another VM and you can see it doing that right here. If we wanted to see an output of the log of that process, we could double click on the VM create task that's in the bottom. It's not going to really give us a lot of information here. You can see it creating the two separate drives that we made and that they were both successful. And then it says task OK and we are finished. So we can close that out and we can select our TrueNAS 101 video VM that we created here. If we wanted to add another drive to this either later down the road or we didn't do it during the VM creation step, we can go ahead and click on hardware. And here at hardware, you already see our two drives right here, 120, 100. We can hit add and we can go to hard drive. 
it comes up automatically with SATA, just like we selected before. It's going to ask us our storage location this time, and we need to choose either our local default LVM drive, and if you installed your system with something like ZFS or ButterFS, it won't be called local LVM. It'll be called either local ButterFS or local ZFS. We're going to choose our storage drive again, and this time we'll make this drive 200 so they're easy to identify as we look at them through the rest of the tutorial. We're going to treat them once this VM is created just like any other drive, and we really don't need to pay attention to them, but just for the sake of the video, we'll make them different sizes so you can see them. And we'll press Add here. And Proxmox will go ahead and create that extra drive, and we'll see it appear here in a minute in the configuration screen. Alrighty, so there you go. Our, here's our 20 gig, and here's our 100 that we made in the create process with our 200 that we made just here a second ago. So now that we know how to do that and that little bit of extra information, we'll make sure our VM is selected and we'll press start. This will start the virtual machine running. Proxmox is going to boot that up in the BIOS configurations that we all set up. In order to view anything, we can either hit console here or we can use the console right here. This will allow us to view the installation process and kind of make any changes or configurations we need, just like we were viewing it on a monitor. We're going to choose install and upgrade and press OK. We're going to select our 20 gig drive like we discussed more by hitting spacebar with our blue bar over top of it. If we had to move the blue bar, we could use the arrow keys to do so. Then we can press enter and it's going to tell us that it's going to erase it. That's fine, so we'll press enter. It wants us to install with an administrative user, not a root user. So we definitely want to do that. It's not recommended to use the root user and it can create some security concerns later on down the road. So we'll leave our blue bar over top of admin and we'll press enter. We're gonna enter our admin password and we'll press enter. Now it wants to know if we can allow EFI boot. We actually didn't set up EFI during the process, but I've found from my other demonstration or my test system that we can just go ahead and press enter here and everything's going to look fine. For some reason, if we select no, it ends the installation. So we're just going to go ahead, press enter here and watch that process take effect. Okay, so we reached 100% and the installation wizard has moved along. At this point, it wants us to go ahead and remove the installation media, which Proxmox is going to do for us automatically, and reboot the system. So we can press end. So we're here at the first startup with the wizard that has moved along. We kind of missed one last step, which was to select the reboot screen. And we're here at the first boot. I'm going to be back with you momentarily when this first boot has finished to show you what the console output or monitor output from your server looks like. And then we're going to attempt to log into the web interface for the first time. Okay, so we're here at the first startup of TrueNAS. And you can see there are some configuration options that we can do here through the CLA or command line interface. But what we're really interested here is this IP address. And that's going to allow us to access the web interface where we can make more adjustments later on. So let's go ahead, take note of that IP address, open a new tab, and enter the IP address. Here is our TrueNAS scale login. Our default username is going to be admin, and it's going to be the administrator password we set up during the installation. We'll hit enter, and we're logged into TrueNAS. For the first time. So now we're into TrueNAS scale and we're going to conclude this video here. In future videos we're going to look at things like adding storage pools, adding Samba shares and NFS shares, as well as doing some virtualization both with 
the VM tools here, and I believe Docker is also an option in TrueNAS scale, as well as setting a private IP address, which is going to be kind of important for communicating with any type of storage or virtualization server on our network. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you like, share, and subscribe for more TrueNAS, Proxmox, and other virtualization content to come out. As always, have a good night.